diagram being this always like this like inverse thing. It's always like the, the absence of light. That's what's making the, you know, it's like it's a, it's a negative, but there is no negative. It's, not, it's like that negative and the positive. It's weird. Um, and I saw that like with also with like, like the weird, uh, like that oil sheen where, it, it was this with oil? Or? It's uh, black paint and mm -hmm. <laughs> to the extent it's gray paint and yeah, they, and China markers. And the thing I like about this, I don't know if it will last for me. Yeah, this is Chicago's costume. Yes, yeah. And, um, so I used um, vinyl to make, uh, well, to make videos that could plug into the video in the box now called Anishinax. Um, and stills from those videos are just um, shots on my cell phone camera that I use um, as a basis for the photographs, and I add and I subtract marks. But um, I read my initial piece why I would do this up is because I think usually paint right the verses so that there's some elements on the back side mm. and some on the front. And I like that because it also relates to reading and you know, a page um, that's right the verse was turning and reading on both sides. And I, I think I bring up that like shadow because it's kind of like that idea of like that like that kind of like using and then breaking of language too. It's like I, I see like the, 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 the ink form here and then like the fact that the punctuation is almost like separate from the rest of the language. But like we still see like the like the dots or like the circles, like it, it comes around again where um, it kind of like the where we see the symbol and then it's being used in not the way that we expect it to be used elsewhere. Yeah, I mean, I, I think a lot of what I aim to do is give physical, physical presence to language. I mean, I'm not a writer, I'm not a linguist, but through art, I mean, actually giving three-dimensional form um, is something I enjoy doing. And it does separate them out, but and the, the dot or the, the ball, the snowball or um, the period or uh, colon, you know, whatever it is, I mean, it, 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 it assumes lots of different meanings, or it could be, I've worked with the dot form in the, in the past, too, as even the Puja, the puja, the dot on the forehead, or mm -hmm. um, there's so many, you know, it's a polysemic symbol, there's so many possibilities for interpreting it. Um, yeah, uh, and then um, I'll give another shout out to the uh, gaffers at the OSU glass department. So a couple of years ago, I, I had the glass speech bubbles made, and um, they're just kind of sitting in my studio, and I thought it would work well um, mm -hmm. here in relationship to the foil and the um, idea of, the, of punctuation. Um, I, years ago, I'll, I just, just popped into my mind, and I, um, into my memory, that I saw a Linda Bangless work, and it's atypical for Bangless. Um, there were these tiny jewel-like parentheses in a, in a box, like I think it was velvet color, uh -huh. color like, you know, coated like a plastic jewelry box. And I thought, wow, you know, making punctuation into Jewels or jewelry. I wasn't. I don't think it was functional, but um, I think that stayed with me. And um, um, you know, uh, years later, kind of uh, wanting to do something with the idea of punctuation in three dimensions. Mm. Um, I really also. I remember that seeing another image on, like I think it was a faculty website, um, another installation where you had uh, text being used in the floor. Right. And it, um, I, mean, I don't know the name of the installation because it was just a type of image existing on by itself without context. So I'm just left with the image itself, and I was like trying to think about like how it, it seemed really interesting because it was also a way to like demarcate space or like kind of uh, no, we're not like. It wasn't the act of separating, but it seemed like the act of bringing together by separating. Like it seemed like if by drawing a line, it made a point that you can then kind of combine the things. Like where you couldn't, if you didn't know where the boundary was, you couldn't figure it out. But by like kind of making that very like kind of draw these connections, and I see that kind of happening. The but with with the with the, the sentence structure diagram. Yeah. Um, would you be able to walk through that? Because I don't uh, again as someone else who wasn't who's every single teacher just assumed that the prior teacher also taught them proper grammar. Uh, I, I don't know the sentence diagram, but I'm really interested in like this form and like how it kind of like uh, the actual like angles and like leading structures. Right. Um, yeah, and, I, and I, I'm actually, just before that, I'm not sure which word you're referring to on the website. So if, um, afterwards, if you could, if you remember that specifically, sure. yeah. Um, but yeah, I know it's something that gives Structure and um, so the structure is sort of like the bound structure. It's a given, and then I can 
work from there. Um, I'm not sure if this is what you saw on the website, but I do have works up from um, previous show um, called Codes and Contingencies, where I use semaphore signaling, and that too has a structure, you know, with mm -hmm. the flags and the, and the yeah. positioning, and um, depending on the positioning, um, you know, use signals, but I, I use a lot of signals of distress when I started in 2016, um, so you can figure out Yeah. You know, that too had a given structure, but I, and I would write things, I would actually signal specific things following the some more signaling alphabet, so to speak, um, but then I would just pile them up, I would stack them up um, sculpturally, so it didn't, it didn't signify, it couldn't really be it, 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 it means semaphore, depending on. So here, it's also a given structure, so I can start with that, um, and it, it divides parts of speech, you know, the nouns and verbs, and I mean, adjectives, adverbs, et cetera, et cetera. So um, I, again, since I didn't learn how to do this in, in school, um, I sometimes take ready-made ones and then substitute my own language. Um, or I, um, my daughter's language, sometimes I ask her to do it for me. Or I have a form, uh, former um, colleague from now from Just America who did um, do that <laughs> for me. But it's, um, you know, something about having that underlying Structure, but then I don't know if it works well with this one, but another one that I had and made an image from this on that was that I was using bar for pronoun comments to know images can be true, but it could also be read images can be true. No, you know, so it's like it, it depends. I mean, that's just a silly kind of joke, but um, sometimes they're quite lovely poems um, within. So I um, and it's a form of drawing. I mean, I see this as a drawing. Yeah, I mean, I do use sense diagrams. I mean, I do draw them, or I do use other materials, but even in steel, I see this as a structured drawing. I think that's really interesting. I was also someone whose uh, current work um, uh, is usually like screen-based or digitally based. Like, my practice is always rooted in drawing. And I, I, you can kind of always see, like, with like artworks where they always just sound like this really, like, um, even though they're much, like, the, you can't see, it's not marked to substrate, like, it's not some sort of drawing implement to substrate, but you can see, you can't then help but read it as a drawing. Mm -hmm. And I see that in your work a lot, and, I, and like, I see, like, I see these as drawings as well. Uh, I, I don't know, the, uh, I, I yeah, just, yeah. Great, I do too, and I, 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 now I'm teaching, um, besides the event drawing class, I'm teaching the intermediate, which is called expanded drawing, and I, and I do have not just drawing in space, or um, drawing off paper, um, you know, other ways to, to and the relationship of drawing and writing, you know, and other ways to conceive of, of drawing. I definitely think of that as a drawing. I like that also, um, we want to talk about like the color palette, like that there's something very like natural here, like the browns are kind of here that are referencing like the natural materials and almost like the patina of uh, like the, the feeling of film, like the light like combo of the sepia tones. I know like the pictograms don't have that, but like they just have like this like kind of warmth quality to them as well. There are, even with like the oil too, there's like this weird kind of um, almost seems like this like unnatural naturalism. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if that's really, like if that's correct or not, but like I, that's just kind of like what I was seeing. Like there's like something that's like it's reading very natural. It's like the glass, the wood, the foiling, these are all metals, but there's some sort of like Processing that has to happen for them to be useful or in the studio, and I think that I, maybe like that might be a leap, but I see that kind of mirroring the way that you treat and use language. Like there's some like natural form of that, and then you're putting them through a system to kind of reconfigure them or something. I, I yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I haven't thought of it quite that way, but I, I mean, I do use um, I guess I do use sample colors, but I also um, it depends. It's like, it's like sometimes I can be quite minimalist, other times quite. Maximalist, so sometimes yeah. I do have a lot of colors, but I think with the foil and the um, photograms, it seemed like this was the palette that worked together. And I, and I have been using these colors more recently, probably because I'm working with these materials. And they're also just basic, um, yeah, basic paint. So the black, white, and then the, 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 the brown as your color. Um, in my studio, I also have a series of, actually, I used them for the previous faculty show three years ago, I have what are called um, uh, paint ladders, is that what I call them? <laughs> paint ladders, but they're made out of stir sticks that have different colors. My own palette, mm -hmm. and I collect them from 
friends and colleagues and students, you know, depending on what paint they were staring at. So they're multicolored. Mm. Um, um, it's like that layer at the time. Yeah, yeah, that too. Right, right. But they didn't just function as non-functional ladders and, and non-functional paint charts, but they are kind of color-coded that, that way. Uh, but I did think of color also in terms of, yeah, their, what, how they signify and um, if, if there could be some symbolic use, um, but don't directly in that other show clues and contingencies, the color coding was significant. Um, and sometimes I'll color code poetry, especially recursive ones where words repeat and then the color will repeat. And my drawing just consists of colored drop, drops, or dots rather, excuse me. But once again, it's based on an underlying structure, the actual. Uh, uh, also, someone whose uh, other work who I immediately thought of was like Dorothea Rockburn. I remember seeing, uh, I went to be a beacon a few years ago and I saw some of those oil press paintings. Um, and I immediately thought of like that kind of like shared similarity. And I really liked what you were talking about, like the, the drawing of the painting, the verso, the uh, person of Roberto. Um, I, I like this like quality of like seeing that there's like something, like you're seeing like an almost like a cross section of something thinking that you're um, seeing the front or the back that you're not sure because it could be reversed. And I see that again with that, that connection of use of like how you treat the language itself. Like you're trying to bring forward the shape to be more visible. And but at times it seems almost like by like, kind of showing it like that it's just form. You're kind of like it's this separation of like you're redefining what that logo means. At least to me that's how I'm seeing the I'm seeing the work. I mean, I, I um, think that might be just the, I mean, partially my more sculptural tendencies, because um, mm -hmm. you can look, you can go around, you know, and see if the 63 is, and you'll see different things front and back. And I'm also interested in what might be on the back of something. And often when um, one makes the work, maybe especially a painter, maybe it's just the way I make paintings, although I haven't really made, you know, more traditional kinds of paintings in a long time, but what's on, what seeps through, and this happens on paper too, is often far more interesting than what's on the front. So I might just reverse it, or you know, with the vinyl works, this idea of right reversal painting on both sides. But I'm, I'm glad you mentioned Dorothy Rockburn, um, this work that I did admire greatly. And I always show her drawings that make themselves in my class. So you yeah. see that, you know, because I think an element of chance is also active in my work. Oh, yeah. But, so for her, you know, she sets up the conditions and she just will. For example, fold the paper and that makes and the light shadow makes the line. Or you know, with the, with oil and rust, I think, or um, I'm not sure if she was more alluding to something. I think of some of her work that way. Um, and we're not that. I mean, mine would be definitely flawed mathematics, but I, you know, I'm kind of interested in that too. When there's an error that's in there. Um. I think another thing I wanted to talk about was these, you, you mentioned them as like vinyls almost, or like records. Yeah. And uh, at a certain angle, I was also seeing this. This is just another cultural thing, but I also like, saw them like, this one, especially with the texture, it almost seemed like a, like they, uh, they almost seemed fleshy, um, even though you can see that it's a natural material. And I was thinking of like this one, especially almost seemed like a, like they, they seem like a stick and poke tattoos. Wow. <laughs> so they, right, they, they right. but I was thinking about that as like the, the use of like creation of line out of just the dot. Yeah. Right? Like right. it's like this, you're, you're not really, it's, it's like the trick of the eye of the fool, they pulling us to see a line where we, there isn't really one. Uh -huh. And I see that also like with the use of like the dots in the language and that's kind of what punctuation is doing too. Yeah. It's creating meaning that's, not really there, but we're putting projecting that meaning right, into it. Right. Oh, that's interesting. And, and and now this looks like an arm to me. I wouldn't have thought of it. Yeah. yeah. I, I just was like yeah. seeing these, like especially this one. I was seeing like that. How like those dots create lines. I, yeah. I mean, I definitely. I I mean, their perforations are um, punctures, and that's to let the light in. Yeah. So that's the you know if I'm not working on a transparent surface like um, you know glassine or vellum or or vinyl, then um, um, I'm using foil, the same foil I used to make these for us, yeah. uh, and I perforate it, and then it's, the light goes through. So, yeah, I hadn't thought about um, the fleshiness of it, uh, but in a certain way, they could be wound-like now that I'm looking at them. But, um, um, and this also is, is music-related, you know, the Pinata Forte and Chano Chanissimo, and, you know, is kind of creating 
out, and this is actually a page from one of my son's floors, um, who's a composer, and then I mm. overlaid the, um, the piano markings. So again, a lot of this is about, about um, sound and speech. Um, and I like, yeah, I like the incorporation of like the music, because that's like another language system that's all right. about specialized, specialized knowledge of language, and um, it's kind of like how much encoding and decoding you need to do. And I like, I, I, what I was really like liking about this work is that it kind of neglects, it kind of, I wouldn't say neglects, but it kind of cuts to the middle of the situation rather than dwelling on like the periphery where it's getting like right to like the structure of like how we see that meaning in those forms, like symbols of the punctuation, symbols of like how do we, how do we associate things together with like the speech bubble, like these like enclosed or open forms or open systems. And I was like thinking like music as well, that it's like a closed and open system. It's how much encoding or decoding you can do um, there. But that's not really a question or a comment. I just, I just really like this like mapping of like different, uh, different language systems together, different ways of encoding or encoding information in forms, like whether it's photography is a, like, you know, it's an, it's an index, uh, like the language is a kind of an index as well. Um, the music as well, it's an index of some sort of sound. Right. I yeah. kind of like those. I, I like that like, kind of repeated reinforcement of like that structure of language. And I, and I also think of them. I mean, the drawing, the uh, score is I, I, uh, musical notation. Of course, is another form of, of drawing. There. And um, there's some beautiful ones. You know, Cage. Um, you know, is just one of the uh, um, makers of a really interesting visual score. Um, yeah, and then I, I must admit, although these were not made out of vinyl, I mean, it's all, I, I make records out of the same vinyl, and that's the oh, true. Yeah, so yeah. Another silly, yeah. yeah, but that was a silly kind of vinyl and, and vinyl. Um, so they are record shapes, and with the videos, sometimes there's, they, I spin them, and, and um, um, you know, the uh, words rotate, and um, the sun, the light rotates, and things like that. And, and it, Voiceless, you know. Voiceless, so, yeah. yeah. And this, of course, has. Well, I've heard it first as less voice, like kind of like with yes. the pianissimo, like that's what you were talking about earlier with like the um, no, like the the, the, right, the exactly. supposition of like the difference of the no is influenced yeah, that. Yeah, you can that definitely that. read that way. And this one is either okay or okay, and it's a boxing. It's a boxing, yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely both. Both And these are more sentence diagrams. Um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, oil. And then the, uh, oh, so like I was reading as like cut paper, but they're, they're yeah, also they're foil. Foil, you're right. And yeah. um, casting shadows are just like, and this is one of our pictures of Trans and True. And, um, how can one know an image? Um, but of course, it becomes something else on there. <laughs> you know, they dematerialize or, you know, cast a shadow or have um, highlights and uh, glimmer. Um, or, or, you know, like somewhat crushed. You can't. We already read this anymore, but it, um, it, it is based on, uh, again, maybe this seems a new, interesting visual form, even if it's um, illegible as a sense. And I like the, like, I was also, I like how they even like, there's like these little callbacks to the different forms, like the, like the parentheses or like the sectioning off, and then we like, I kind of see, I've seen those forms repeated yeah. up here, and like, this, like obviously the one with the speech bubble. Um, I, I really like, I'm really enamored with the speech bubble form as well because it's, it's like such a funny shape. Like I think it's hard and arguably like a funny shape. Like it's just this last, oops, I'm dropping a pencil. Uh, I, I think like it's just like this weird oblong blob and it's just yeah, a little portion of like a little tail of a, right, right. like it's just a little sense of directionality. Like if that's all it's gesturing towards is this is, it's, it's just another form of punctuation in a way. It's just saying like this is, the direct, it's directed towards who the speaker is. And it's comic. I mean, it is in comics. And, yeah. You know, and, uh, you know, that, and, and there are different formats to the speech bubble. This is probably the most recognizable one. But actually, when I had the glass made, we tried different different ones that from comics, you know. And, um, and I wanted the one that was like a sigh, you know. <laughs> so it would, um, or some thought, you know, these are also thought, thought bubbles, but would have the separate little circles. Um, oh, like, like having like an emotive quality? Like it's yeah, or what, the one that has, <laughs> like, um, like it's, it's this and then like little, oh yes, like, yes. <laughs> little tail, which I guess mm -hmm. I actually could have done maybe because I, I, I did the, the separate, had this made separately um, with the 
God is the one in the front of the mind. Um, but, but yeah, they, they assume different parts, but they're all kind of humorous. Um, and, and then the fact that there, there's no language in there, it's just, you know, it's empty. Um, you know, so less speech or speech less, or just what it means also in a sense of um, repressing speech or, or um, censoring or the inability to talk for various um, reasons, or just silence, you know, in and of itself. Um, and I like how there's even like this display, like the display of them is giving itself its own voice, as if like this, like this arrangement is having something else to be said, but itself is also absent. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's actually, actually why I used the asterisk for that, because the mm -hmm. asterisk um, points to something else, you know, mm -hmm. it's up, 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 up by the word or up above and then in the footnote, you know, so it, car it carries over, it leads on, it, it doesn't stop, so I like that idea conceptually that it's that something um, I just, Yeah, it's almost like, a, especially like when the you know, larger installations, it almost feels like you're, it's yeah, like everything is being like pointed to some other point on the installation. So it creates even like within the symbology. Like that's why I kind of started with like the, the the organization of the space because it seemed like even like the organizing everything from like the organizing of the total groupings of elements down to like the symbology were like all like uh, situated to, to get like a person to move through the space. And yeah, and I do, yeah, I do want people to respond. It is kind of like a call and response, you know, set, set up. But again, it's another way to um, communicate. And, and I, I, I um, you know, I'm happy with the way that this, this, these elements are configured, but it could have been something else, you know, in, um, in this space, just with them or maybe without some of them um, and distributed <coughs> differently. The only thing I knew for sure is that I wanted the sense that I might be in touch with mm -hmm. the um, uh, and, yeah, we're talking about the dots, the punctum also, is, you know, is, is <laughs> the dot um, or the focus. Is, is that like Latin for puncture or? Yeah, that... I think point. Um, point. Yeah, um, I, I think, you know, it's hard for my mouth. We'll talk about that tomorrow about essay on the punctum. Um, but I was also just playing with it as a dot, so it's dots of light and dots, drawn dots, and then the punctured dots, so it's immovable. Um, same with spell and spell. Themselves, 
right? They don't, they, you know, even though like I know the foil, like I know like I'm a person who's a human who has used foil before. Like I know that there's like that feeling of that crushing, but like they seem almost like just kind of alien objects for themselves. Yeah, I mean, um, most of my work is, uh, yeah, I mean everything, almost everything shows the hand and it's very low tech. <laughs> you know, um, I'm, again, I'm happy, I like that relationship, um, you know, between something that's more industrial and something that's handmade, and I'm really happy that I can uh, yeah. film myself out of like a plasma cutter or a one point of laser cutter, and now the dark room, um, but it, this still shows my hand, you know, um, even though I've had to use a, you know, Said there it kind of also remind me like when you're talking about like the like the materials being descaled like it's not it's not your descaling it's like the materials are like needed to be descaled and I, I, I like that because it reminds me of like that like the, the German art tradition like the concrete Kunst which was like their weird version of minimalism where yeah, I'm gonna probably like do a like a really short summary it's like a really bad summarization of that but it's like using minimalism not for its inherent minimalizing aesthetics of trying to like you know remove all like signs and symbols but more like getting at just the material itself so like just presenting masonite or cardboard or right. tape or paper it's, right, right. it's not doing anything else other than being a the thing that it is already and i kind of see that back in fact similarly where like even though there's like some paint being applied to surfaces like we can just go around and see that it's just like a convex or a concave piece of foil or it, it's, it, they're not taking aims at fooling or tricking. Yeah. It's just like they're just presenting themselves as the way they are. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. I, I, I wasn't familiar with that term, but I think of Art de Fulgur, you know, the Italian art movement um, using everyday materials mm -hmm. um, and the materials as they are. It's funny, I was thinking then also of David Ireland and, and the dumb balls, you know, throwing a ball of concrete from um, one hand to the other until. Um, and, I, and I, you know, so the process and the work were, and the material were kind of one and the same, but I always, you know, um, I don't know, I'm still kind of really interested in that piece and what it entails, but I only recently realized that it, it removes the touch, I and mean, it's something from one hand to the other, but the concrete will not um, actually show the touch after, after a while, just will harden. But it's another instance of the ball shape of the sphere. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm.
Yeah, I mean, their spatial relationship would change. So, so I mean, and that's of interest to me, whether um, I take the same elements to another space or even just a, a different iteration, the same thing. Actually, on that show I was mentioning on clues and contingencies had, I think, three or four iterations, and every couple of weeks I would change the uh, arrangement. And then um, there was a hallway that had a shelf that had many installations on it, but then I would take those elements from the shelf and bring it to the main room and take elements from the main room and put it back on the shelf. So it's in flux. I think that's what interests me. Yeah, like, uh, I also like that because it's showing that it is just really like the like the structural of the like the like you're commenting on like the, like the structure like the, like the structure of music or like all like these structures of just language in general and how we imprint and encode or imprint meaning and then the fact that you're kind of showing like all well, the the specificity of the symbol isn't really what's as important as necessarily like the relationship that they have like they give right. each other meaning. Right, right, and also I you know I mentioned. We both mentioned structure a lot, but I also am interested in subverting the structure. Yes. You know, that's why it could, you know, I think things can be read differently, or um, with the uh, semaphore signaling, um, even though it started having a specific meaning, it, it, it then became um, something that's more visual and, and scriptural and space. And the meaning, the semantic meaning was denied. Thank <laughs> you.